It's been how the flower beds come. I will save that for the stream. So, Dan, don't let me forget my really great oh, story. I think we're live. What a great story. I had a great story. A great story? Well, we're live. You can tell it. Let's start with it. Oh, wait. Hello, everyone. You know, all you people out there expecting a professional broadcast. <laughs> we're very disappointing, you know, but here we are anyway. We're here with the fabulous Dave Johnson of Dave Johnson Renown to tutorialize you people on uh, his skills as an artist. So, uh, something new, something exciting, something to get you through your uh, quarantines and oval teens. So, have fun. Hey, we're here for you. Yay. Dave looks hey, a Dave. Happy. How are you doing? Everybody say hello to Dave. Hey, hey. Hey, Dave. Hey, your Hi, pipe Dave. Looks Hi, Dave. Dave. I'm feeling a little piggish today. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dave, is that one of the, the things that you had up in the Warner Brothers bathroom? It was. Uh, not in the bathroom. No, at my <laughs> cubicle. I think Same I left the things in the bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom. Uh, Dave, when at Warner Brothers, Dave uh, put these these cardboard drawings. Um, I don't remember the, exactly what they said, but they. Oh, they I do. Up, you know, yeah, go. You go ahead. To, they tell a story about how you freaked the shit out of everyone who looked in the mirror. Well, there was a there was a drop down ceiling in the uh, in the urinal, and uh, if you were at the stand up urinal, you were close enough to the wall to kind of look to your right and up. And I had a cardboard figure looking down on you with with longing eyes and with a word balloon just said, uh, I like to watch. So if you were standing there and you just happened to look up, there's a guy looking back at you, you know, I thought it, it was kind of funny. So Yeah, I mean, the first time I saw that, I mean, when you're working animation like comics, you're up very late and uh at night the warner brothers studio would be very scary and so i was in there taking care of some business and i looked up and saw that thing legitimately frightened me <laughs> also dave i remember like because i took over for you uh at warner brothers on uh, doing backgrounds for justice league unlimited and you had put all these ravens up in the pipework above the lights yeah day after halloween the uh the uh there was a store called Oz and they sold uh, Halloween decorations and they wanted to get rid of everything. And they had all these realistic feather. I mean, they put like real feathers on them. Uh, these ravens, uh, ravens and little tiny birds uh, that had wires for legs. And uh, <laughs> they were selling them for a dollar a piece. So I bought like 40 of them and uh, <laughs> I put them around the studio, but above my table uh, because of the recess ceiling, I put like, I don't know, like 15 or 20 of them. <laughs> yeah. I remember visiting Warner Brothers and seeing this. I mean, Dave's artwork is kind of like that devil pig there. And and all the ravens just were everywhere. I mean, yeah. the whole the whole animation floor of WB was filled with that stuff. Yeah. And and we built uh, uh, push pin blow guns. Um, and there was probably a million push pins up in the ceilings um, that they probably had to go and take them all down eventually. Yeah, they were still there when I left. Didn't you shoot yeah. someone in the eye? No, I hit a I hit an intern in the face with a uh, <laughs> with a snap and pop. Oh, okay. That fit in a blowgun perfectly, and I didn't. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see him, and uh, accidentally hit him in the face. So. Was that intern Steve Jones? No. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Everyone see he's tall. Yeah. The intern was actually really short, but I didn't see him. That is the definition uh, of a hostile workplace. Yeah. yeah. With Dave around it was. I thought for sure I was going to get fired. Hey Dave, yeah. what's the uh, what's the origin of Devil Pig? I I, I don't never heard it. What is, what's the deal? Uh, well, here, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh God, you open yeah. up a can of worms there, Joe. Oh, yeah, you gotta get it. we got it. We got to eat some time up here. So yeah, <laughs> Dave's tutorial is going to change people's lives. I'm it's going to change my. Hey, when does that when, it, when does that episode start? Yeah, I'm well, taking notes. Soon. I think we might be live already. <laughs> Oh, we're live. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> when I lived in Georgia, uh, I moved at one point. I moved to North Carolina and for a year. And you know, Dave Johnson Studio sounds boring, so I was like, I need a studio name. And I found this uh, porcelain pig doll at a flea market that was. Uh, I just thought it was the most evil looking thing I'd ever seen, mm. and it was you know painted like a pig, like pink, and it had. Uh, baby blue overalls and I brought it home and I painted it to make it look like a devil. Wow. And then when I moved out to uh, California, I was just like, eh, 
Devil Pig Studios. So that's where this guy came from. Right. Nice. So, and a legend is born. But I mean, look at that face. How is that a cute face? Like whoever made this thought that that was a cute looking face. Hmm. That thing looks like he's going to murder you in his in a sleep. It is creepy. So, so how could I resist? Have you thought about doing a Devil Pig story? Comic? No. Honestly, I don't really have a story for him. <laughs> so weird. Go figure. Weird. Is it intentional that uh, your pig's chest hairs are six six six, or is that a happy accident? No, that was intentional. Yeah. Everything with Dave's intentional. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like a good a good segue into Dave. What are you going to draw for? Are you going to do a cover? What's your plan to? What's your tutorial going to be about? Uh, I honestly. I'm terrible at tutorials, so I thought I would do something that at least I know I could talk my way through it, and uh, I'm going to show you how I color. Okay. Oh, wow. That's a treat. So, Done. Excellent. I got, a, I got a couple of easy tricks that, uh, I don't know, it makes it easier for me to color, so maybe it'll help somebody else. I'm going to... What's great about this, Dave, is that usually when people come and look over your shoulder, you know, young artists, kids, or whatever, usually just punch them in the face and tell them to get away. I do. I do. Yeah. So this or I punch him in the nuts. Or he throws firecrackers at A real treat for all of us here. Right, yeah. <laughs> Pay attention. Yeah. So basically, when I color, uh, I start off, obviously, with a, uh, you know, is your screen flashing, or is that just me? Uh, uh, mine has blanked a few times. Yeah, it's weird. Um, yeah. Why does this say Sean Crystal the Drip? <laughs> <laughs> I blame that on Dan. Yeah. This, is, this is the problem with Dan has to focus on the show and he's not drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is, this I'm already a problem, be. Dave, and then I do this stuff. Forget it. All right. So unlike other people, I color in CMYK. Um, I don't I don't color in channels. I do it the weird way. I do it so, CMYK also. So is there, what's your reason for that? Uh, I just learned the way I learned it. It's probably a backward way of doing it, but I've never had anything misprint, so it, it works for me. Mm -hmm. So I start off with my line art. I clean it up and all that kind of stuff, and uh, I multiply it, which makes it transparent. But in doing so, it becomes too transparent. So I need to make a backup black copy. So what I do is I, I go into... Uh, color range from select mm -hmm. and it literally makes everything uh, negative and I, I have to hit image which then makes it a positive and I select a, a, an area on the uh, original I don't know if you can see it um, but I, I select a, a big black area that I know this little eyedropper will find and that will select all the blacks like all the line work. Now, I don't want to use that. I want to actually reduce it down two pixels. So I go to uh, modify. Or I'm sorry, I go to, uh, what do I do? Yeah, what yeah. do you do? I go to modify and hit contract. And I hit two pixels. And that selects everything. So it doesn't, because if you do it the other way, it'll make any fine lines thicker. And I don't want that. And so what I end up with is a less than you know it doesn't have all the lines but it has all the big black areas that are going to be like transparent which is not good so that's how i start everything off um and uh you know after this is all the easy stuff that most people know um you, you do the color flats which is you know once again fairly easy you just pick all the colors you want that looks, so, that, that, looks like finished. that looks a little uh, weird. Well, it's just color flats. There's no rendering on there. I mean, I'm joking, Dave. Um, but what I do is what I do different than a lot of people, and to me, it makes it look more human. Is I've scanned a piece of uh, chipboard. Let's see, yeah, there it is. And this is like something not like on the back of uh, notepads and you know all kind of stuff. But I. But I like it. It gives. It's got a. It's got a texture to it. It's. It's. I. I generally try to. I'm more of a warm color colorist, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it works for me. Um, 
So what I do with my color then is I, I change my color layer to also multiply. So dark. Well, it is, but that's creating a midtone, which is what I want. Um, oh, midtone. Oh, midtones. Oh, fancy. All right, Dan. So what I'll do on top of that is I'll create another multiply layer. And I'll pick a like a medium color or somewhat light actually. So I'm picking like a light brown, mm -hmm. and I will then do a shadow layer. And that's where and I'm you, kind of picking light source. You don't do the shadow layer in black. You just do it. You do it in a light brown. Yeah. You know, but, anytime you use black, Jeff, it starts using too much CMYK, and it's also bad for printing. Gotcha. Yeah. So. It sucks black out of everything. Yeah. So as you can see, I'm kind of, I'm just kind of finding a light source, you know, and you can use any willy nilly, you know. And that's gonna so that's your shadow layer. This will be my shadow layer. And that's on multiply, and that's brown, right? Yeah, but you want to, you know, you want to just, if it's too dark, you can lighten it up, you know, in the uh, opacity layer thing, you know, like just make it lighter, darker, you know. Gotcha. You don't want to be too dark because um, then things will, especially in CMYK, they can they can go way too dark and print really screwy. The other, the other issue with uh, using brown is it will turn blues like a green. So sometimes if you're using something that's predominantly blue, you might have to uh, change it up a little bit. Hmm. Um, but that's not that hard to do. I mean, you, you just make you make choices as you go along. Um, and once again, like like the brown in my shadow layer is turning this kind of gray a little bit too brown. So what I can do is select that area. And then go back to my shadow layer and then hit uh, the uh, hue saturation and change the hue saturation to something that's a little bit more blue, you know. Yeah, that's interesting. So it doesn't muddy up the the under the, the base color? Yeah, so now it's a little bit more blue. It's so also saving him time because then he doesn't have to keep switching colors for, um, you know, uh, the brush. Oh, so gotcha. So so from there, let's say if um, um, let's say I'm not even doing the girl at this point. Like I can look at also his skin, and it's a little it's it's a little dark. So I can select that, and then go back to hue and saturation, and maybe desaturate it a little bit. So it's not so so red. So that's something that I like a little bit better. And then uh, basically on top of that. Um, I do a highlight layer, and that's a hundred percent. And I'll go back to like skin tones. Is the highlight yeah. layer on multiply or normal? Uh, it's uh, normal. <clears throat> and everybody, oh, this is all underneath the multiply layer with the with the line art. Yeah. And uh, from there, I'll start with I use a I use a sponge brush um, that that actually came with Photoshop. I've never done anything with it. It's I, I don't know what it's called, um, but I've got it set up to where it, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a pen pressure. So it's, it's not like, you know, if I, if I do it really lightly, it's thin. And if I really push it down, I get a little bit more brush. Um, is that flow a hundred percent also? Is it everything? Uh, Right now it is. Uh, I've got opacity, though. No, actually, uh, no, actually, uh, opacity. I've got it like down to nineteen percent because I, I don't want to build it up too fast. So, gotcha. um, and then I'll just start pulling some highlights out. Now, I, you know, a lot of people use airbrush, and airbrush is too. I don't know. It, it's it's too mechanical for me. It's it too much like the side of a van. You what? Looks too much like the side of a van. Yeah, it just it, it's not natural. You know, I, I want stuff that when I'm all said and done, ends up looking like because of the texture that I'm using with the paper underneath, it, it ends up looking like a human did it. Yeah, your yours has a very like hand colored feel. 
Yeah, having the texture, having that chipboard in the back really makes it feel as though you're working, like there's a grain in the paper. Yeah, I, I dig that. I mean, that's kind of my thing, you know. Uh, it may not be good for everybody else, but hey, Dave. And the other good thing about chipboard is it it, it hides uh, problems. Like it's I, I I don't know how to explain it more than that, but you don't have to be perfect because the chipboard is there to absorb a lot of you know like over over the lines and I don't know. It just makes sense super fast. Just like this, I'm almost, I'm halfway done. Like, hey Dave, um, yeah. so, so Stone Monkey is asking, do you calibrate your monitor, what color? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, don't ask me how I did it. I did it a long time ago and it still is, you know, the best way to do it, honestly, the cheapest way if, if you're getting printed is to wait till something comes out in print Yeah. and then hold it up and go, oh, you know, that's <laughs> printing kind of dark. I better change some setting. Um, so basically, it's you know I've got my darks, I've got my lights, and now I've got my highlights, and uh, it's just a matter of bringing them out to a point where it makes me happy. Now is that is that fate? And I, will you do another stage after this, or that that'll be done? There is one more stage that I like to do. Um, it just once again, it's a personal preference. Um, but when it concerning highlights, I tend to. Uh, I do another multiply layer on top of all those, and I pick like a dark red, and I, I still use my uh, sponge brush, but sometimes I'll cut out areas. I'll add a I'll, like maybe at fifty-five percent opacity, and I, maybe I'll zoom in. It helps you see it better. Yeah. Nice. But sometimes, I, you know, like where I put my highlights or my uh, shadows in, I'll like define them a little bit more with color. And it, it's almost like a, like a third, like, like black line or a secondary black line. Didn't well, Drew used to do that? With figure, artists, when figure artists would kind of like, they'd, they'd make their, their shadow edges real sharp and they leave some of them, um, you know, as, as it fades into a flatter surface or a rounder surface and you know they don't have those hard edges but those hard edges are what really gives things definition sometimes so i always love that about your work yeah it's just it's kind of, you know and, and sometimes you can even use that that line to if there's areas you want to darken up a little bit instead of using black you're using the color and you can go in and kind of have some fun with it and add a little bit more darker uh, darker layers to it mm -hmm. I love that, Dave. That's really coming out nice. Yeah, that's popping already. Yeah, I mean, once again, with the with the uh, the chipboard, it just man, it just speeds everything up. Um, go back to color. Hey, well, Dave's coloring. Uh, uh, I guess had a question. Um, when working in traditional guys and you're scanning your inked pieces, uh, what do you do? 600 dpi grayscale bitmap. I think 600 is too much. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's more than it's more than you'll see in print. You know? Yeah, I mean normal comic book coloring is uh, 400 at best. Yeah, so. I color I color 600, but I'm coloring at at the original size that it's going to print. So oh, so I'm not coloring a um you know a 15 because we usually draw it at around you know an 11 by 17 paper and. So if I, well, that, that file is going to be too huge. Well, I guess it's act, acting though about uh, asking you about just the black and white inks. When you scan your inks, are you scanning at six hundred? You scanning at four hundred? Well, the other thing is, are you scanning in grayscale versus bitmap? If you're scanning in right. bitmap, then yeah, you want to go pretty high. Yeah. Um, but I scan in grayscale because, yeah. like, like me and Dan use certain techniques that would tend to not look good in bitmap. Yeah, unfortunately, if you're do, if if you're if the ink you're using is a little bit sometimes gets gray or faded, a lot of times some of my lines are purposely more gray than black. Mm -hmm. um, if you you know you're supposed to basically scan it in, scan it in grayscale, and then convert it to bitmap, 
and that takes away anything. So it's just a super perfect line and then turn it back to grayscale and start and start going that way. But um, if you do that, you're going to lose any fine lines whatsoever. But what, what's, what's nice about that is uh, you will be able to, if you're going to do color holds and use your uh, line art, it, it, it's perfect for that because you can capture every single pixel um, effortlessly. There's there's no fade offs or anything. Yeah, that is the one downside of the way I color is uh, color holds sometimes can be a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's just my style of coloring or inking. So I, I don't want to lose that at the same time. If I know I'm going to color hold something when I ink it, I make sure I, I ink that part in and it's not, there's no, um, there's no gray tones in my inks. Are you talking about where the, the open, you can't select color when you're doing color hold? Is that what you're talking about? It's, tr it's turning that ink line into an actual color line. Oh, I got you. I got you. It has okay. more of an animation look to it. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I don't do the I don't do the coloring myself. Um, but my colorist asked me. I scan stuff in at six hundred and make sure in grayscale and make sure I have all the clean line and the perfect exactly what I want. And then um, I'll let him drop that down to either four hundred or three hundred, depending on what he feels like doing. Mm -hmm. So that's basically my color technique. I mean, you know, it's it's not rocket science. It's there's nothing super technical about it. Mm -hmm. It's just my own dumb way of doing it that I never uh, nobody yeah. ever corrected me. It looks it looks really like you put a lot of work into it. Now I can see where I thought, oh my god, it's so, like that skin tone on Dum Dum. Yeah, there's not a lot of work in there. Yeah. I thought it was <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they worked smart. Yeah. 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 But but I, that's that, that's that's the thing, right? Where, wherever we can find the cheats that make things faster, you use them. Yeah. You know? Also, yeah, I mean, no, the way I used to color it used to take me forever, and yeah. it, I used to get so like obsessed over over uh, the minutia of of certain things, and and the chipboard just absorbed it all. Yeah. Um, I mean, here it is without chipboard. It, oh yeah, like if yeah. You know? But it, it adds that mid-tone, and, and the mid-tone is half the job. That mid-tone, it, it's, it's literally half the job. So I don't have to think about it. I can just, I can just go at yeah. that point. So, you know, and I could, I could noodle the shit out of this thing forever, but, you know, once again, it's, 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 that's not really my style, you know? Dave, so. uh, Patrick asked on the uh, chipboard, is it scanning in? To where it's a uh, custom color in the library, or how do you have that set up? Uh, no, it's literally uh, I save I saved a scan of chipboard, and and I just pull that and use that every time. And what's so it's interesting, just, guys, it's just an image in the background as a layer. If you yeah. guys if you guys don't want to if you guys don't want to be exactly Dave Johnson, I mean, you can put any you can put any sort of texture back there that you want. You can. That's, that's what Dave uses, which kind of makes it uniquely. You could put a photo like of Chip, Chip Zarsky, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has his own style. Yeah. Potato chips. That would look great. Yeah. Like a parchment paper or any kind of thing with a texture on it. Yeah. I mean, imagine, Jeff, if you had like a painterly texture behind there. Yeah. Uh, sure. Coke and baby. Also. I can imagine that. Imagine it right now for me. Close your eyes. Done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it covered. Good. <laughs> So, uh, so how have you guys been uh, holding up last week? What have you been doing? Oh, oh it's terrifying. Uh, Contemplating. Um, Dan's, uh, how, sorry. Dan's father. <laughs> Just ben, I, ben, I hear you were, uh, you were building flower beds, man. Yeah, yeah. We've been doing a little uh, carpentry and horticulture around here for the kids. So, uh, yeah. what, are you, uh, what are you planning to grow out there? <laughs> Something just froze. Yeah, it just froze up. And uh, our daughters and wife are doing the uh, the planting, the seeding. Uh, so they just went and bought a hodgepodge of uh, herbs and vegetables to to start. So they've done that, and we'll see if anything sprouts. Otherwise, I got some really nice uh, boxes. I, I planted some. Well, my wife planted some uh, some lettuce and some kale. We have a little garden thing that we've never done anything with, but uh, we were inspired to get some green. <laughs> so we'll see how that, that works out. Is that what you spent your week doing? 
I, you know what's funny is like I used to when I was a kid before I uh, one of my first jobs like most kids was going around and mowing lawns and doing yard work and crap like that. I haven't done anything like that in forty years, <laughs> so I forgot how hard it is. Right. That's how you. Hi- that's why you hire the neighborhood kids. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let them sweat out there. Yeah. I haven't worked for a living in a long time. <laughs> Yeah, my son, you know, he, he works at Starbucks or did work at Starbucks. Right now he's on uh, hazard pay. You know, they told him to stay home, basically. Yeah. And um, the uh, going up to this, he was like, yeah, I think I, think I might want to leave Starbucks this summer, go mow lawns or something like that. Uh, <laughs> after spending a day in the heat putting these uh, beds together, I'm like, so you still uh, interested in going into manual labor? And he's like, uh, maybe not carpentry, but yeah, uh, yeah it's a little yeah. different. <laughs> yeah, that's it's the it's the worst. When I uh, I used to have a job. One of my stepfathers used to build pools for a living, and um, as a young kid, I had to help dig the gigantic hole. Uh, and <laughs> you don't you don't have heavy machinery for that that digs that stuff out. It was way back in the seventies, and uh, you, you a shovel and goes. Make me a pool, boy. In Hawaii, it was a team of Samoans and me uh, digging gigantic holes in the backyards of places. It's really well, no fun. Is really Hawaii inspiring. all sand? Is it like digging in Florida? Uh, you know what? Uh, there's volcanic. It's most. It's like you hit hard rock pretty quick. Okay. So I, I'm most interested in knowing what Dan did this week. <laughs> uh, I cleaned out my garage. Um I found I found some calendars that I'm in and uh, when I was <laughs> good times. I'll yeah. post those on Facebook. That should be yeah. good for some laughs. Did you find yeah. any heard, 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 heard you were zooming, Dan. Were you zooming? I, I've been zooming. I've been zooming and having a like <laughs> drinking drinking online with people. It's kind of a drink and draw without the drawing. Right. So like this. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Ben, yeah. Ben and I had a little chit chat time. Hmm. Ben, is that the, you had more beer delivered? Um, no, I'm still uh, drinking in my uh, my stash. I haven't had to break out of it yet. So I'm gonna, I'm no. gonna have to, to, to we're have well to stocked here beer. at the uh, Fortress of Solitude. We got plenty of beer, plenty of bourbon, plenty of wine. Nice, Dan. More can we, I get we'll be sober when we meet our doom? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, By the way, uh, to, to, to all the people that join us every week. Uh, hope you guys are healthy and safe, washing your hands, you know, doing all that sort of stuff. And I'm not talking to you, Dan. <laughs> you know, my, my wife, it's like the apocalypse here. She's like, okay, well, we're all, you know, we're all locked in. We have so much food, yeah. and she's social distancing from me a lot. And I'm like, hey, well, she's just smart. waiting for a reason. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I had uh, the last week and a half, my uh, my teeth decided to explode. I've been going to the dentist. I had like six trips to the dentist in the last. <laughs> it's been wonderful, but Dan, I, this is the story I wanted to tell you. So I, I um, uh, it, it's it's a it's a great story, but it has a dark ending. So just just forewarning everybody. Perfect. So you I look healthy, what was that? You look healthy. You look fine. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm actually in a lot of pain right now. I had some. Oh. I had a thing, you know. Uh, but uh, but I, I I had to go to the drugstore to pick up some antibiotics for the thing I got. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm waiting there for my prescriptions, and I hear a voice behind me, and it's it's a it's a young lady's voice saying, "Excuse me, sir." And I turn around, and this is the best part of the story. She goes, "Are you Joe Casada?" And I'm oh, like, "I like that." Man. <laughs> and I love when that happens. It's great. <laughs> I love it. It's the, those are the best stories in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and normally I would shake someone's hand, ask the name and stuff, but you know, with the social distancing stuff, we were kind of like, ha 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 ha. You know, um, so it was great. That was awesome, right? Uh, she was really sweet, lovely, very polite, the whole thing. This cool person. And then as I'm leaving, I say, okay, bye. She says, bye. Says, and here's where it turns dark. She says, I can't wait to watch Drink and Draw today. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, I love it. That's the best part of the story, Joe. Uh, <laughs> Joe, I made you famous. Uh, Is Ben her favorite? Did you ask? <laughs> yeah, that was the next question. Can you yeah. get Ben's autograph? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's where it went. that's where it turned dark. Yeah, like yeah. okay. is Ben as adorable in person as he is online? Yeah, that's I always, I, like I said, whenever whenever somebody comes up to me outside of you know whatever 
I just and and they introduce themselves. I like to say, hey, ask them their name, find out what they're you know what they like about what we're doing or Marvel, whatever it may be. Um, but we didn't have a chance to chat because of this yeah. stuff. So if she's watching, thank you very much. It was really nice of you to to to, to say hi. Um, it was cool. And uh, but really, drink and draw sucks. You shouldn't be watching. <laughs> Except for Ben. Of course. Except for Ben. Ben's ben, the best. I'm hot again, man. Hey, man. It's, it's opening day. Yeah. I, you mean, you mean an opening day? An opening day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm defiantly wearing my Cardinal shirt and hat and drinking Budweiser. And you can pretend all you want, man. Yep. That's beautiful. Uh, it's, hey, it's all I hey, got today. Dave, we got a few minutes left. Do you mind if I just uh, ask you some questions about, uh, I know you wanted to show us coloring. Um, but I always wonder, like, we, when we did, back in the day, you were doing covers for Detective and Dan and I were doing a backup feature. I always really loved how, uh, let alone the designs are great, but, like, you always seem to pick a color or a color theme. Did you have a process behind doing that, or were you just just doing I, something you hadn't done? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of monochromatic coloring, so... You know, with something that pops like that, the one that's on screen right now, it's mostly green. But then you've got the, the thing that pops off is the uh, the yellow and the, I mean, the orange and red. Mm -hmm. And right. that's just kind of, I don't know, I don't, you know, it's it's mostly by gut. You know, I just go, hey, that would be cool. You know, so uh -huh. you don't like you're not planning out like this color means this. I'm going to put this here. No. To that deep? <laughs> What's the political statement in that blue, Dave? Well, I mean, because I, I know whenever I'm designing anything, I I have to have the underlying structure and the math, and I do all the lines, and I and I do all that stuff that Andrew Loomis talks about with his compositional breakdowns, mm -hmm. and and you seem to be doing all that, but it but it doesn't seem like you actually do any of that math. So you're just winging it. I am. I'm literally winging it every time I do a cover. That doesn't look like you're winging it on this one. That's yeah. a lot of wings. Well, that one, I, I literally go, I I mean, if you're familiar with the Mike Golden Batman covers. Yeah, very. I, I was like, man, I got to use some of that magenta. That that magenta is just so badass. And that's what I did. Yeah. So you were inspired by the color. Favorite, yeah. That's one of my favorites, that green Why did you one. choose green for this one? Yeah. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah. What's, what's the, the meaning of the fist? Dude. Well, that one I really love is because, like, it's some of your designs are really, really complicated, and then some of them, like that one and this this one, this particular one here, are so simple, but they're so ballsy. I would never have had the guts to just draw the ring. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just went for it. the The funny thing about these two is, uh, if you look at the blood splatter, that's um, I found that on the internet years ago. It's a photo of real blood on a white background and it works so well and i just double it triple it i i stretch it i bend it and it it you found the, that the on the blood, blood is so <laughs> or so particular with you know a lot of people just use straight red and and blood has browns and darks and and it if if you do it right it ends up looking like real blood um the other, the other thing I love about that cover that you got on the screen is I added the, the fingerprint on the inside. Um, and why'd you do that? Well, why not? It, it makes sense. Like, <laughs> somebody's holding on to it. So. All right. Well, I mean, you say that you're just winging it, but then that kind of thought, like what there would be a fingerprint someone taking off the ring, I mean, that – so are you – so you are thinking about it. Well, that I just I, honestly, I think that was a last minute kind of. Hey, that would be cool. So I found a fingerprint online. What were you and, thinking uh, when you designed this one, Dave? You what? When you yeah. when you did this cover? <laughs> when you picked out that texture? Yeah, screw you. That's not mine. Dave didn't do that one. That's just some old Russian art that I thought. It's not even old. That's somebody doing new Russian art. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I had Russian art. So Jeff Jeff picked out all these. So I went and looked for a bunch of stuff that Dave talked about. He liked these guys and this stuff. So I wanted to bring some up to talk about it because I'm always fascinated by you do so many covers and they always seem to have each one seems to be different and unique. And I'm like, where are you getting your reference from? Where are you getting these ideas from? And um, you always talked about old Russian proletarian posters and propaganda art. 
Um, and oh, like, yeah. where do you where do you find that shit? Why, uh, why, why well, is that in your your, your uh, brain? Back in the old days, we used to have to go to weird bookstores and find you know books on Russian Russian propaganda, German propaganda art. Uh, but now, God, man, you just find it anywhere. Uh, it's kind of annoying, actually. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it took all the fun out of, you know, tracking that stuff down and finding it. So There's another one Dave did that, that Jeff found. Yeah. <laughs> if you can do that one. This, one. this one gets me, I don't know what it is, but I want to buy uh, munitions. Yeah, it's weird. You know what? I didn't have a great father figure. No, Maybe I'm like... I, it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. If you know it's it's actually it, they aren't munitions. Those are sp uh, suppositories. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're very popular in Russia, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it hits Dan in the fields, uh, <laughs> right in the fields. Yeah, yeah. There's Dave. There you go. There's Dave's little face. Yeah. So how like so how many covers have you done? Do you think in your career have you kept track? I I, I haven't even tried to figure it out. We've well, done at least a hundred from the hundred bullets. Yeah, yeah, at, least, yeah. at least a hundred. Yeah. Let's go show some of those. This one, I don't know. This is where the comics go comes in handy because thank God for that hundred bullets logo. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I, I I told you got lucky, Dave. Yeah, yeah. I got lucky on that one. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where half the shit comes from. I just think it'd be cool to do. So when you mess around with the, uh, Logistically speaking, when you mess around with where the logo is going, do you have to clear that with the editor, or do they pretty much let you do what you want? On Hunter Bullets, man, Will Dennis let me do whatever the hell I want, and that that was great. Well, he was drunk the whole time, right? Yeah, probably. That one's one of my favorites, right there. That's a great one. Well, that's the ending. So um, that one makes me sad. <laughs> yes. Did you? Uh, did you ever look at Riso's stuff before you did the covers, or were you just going by story concept, or just whatever? Well, when I started 100 Bullets, there was full script, full inks, and full color. And around issue 25, there was nothing. Um, Brian hadn't even started writing them yet. So luckily, I had all that material to pull from that Eduardo did ahead of, you know, I mean, if the whole series was like that, it would have been a nightmare. But, hmm. but that's how you ended up with like very simple covers because I didn't know what was going on in the book. When you did this one, for, uh, <laughs> well, it's a it's a it's 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 a guy and another guy inspired by the same guy <laughs> Dave was inspired by. Must you constantly be a douche? <laughs> Yes. Is that a rhetorical question? Here's another one. Here's another one Dave worked on. The lighter side of Dave. The lighter side of Dave. Um, Dave's got a big heart. He loves animation. He loves um, loves Saul well, Bass. I mean, obviously, Dave, I love Saul Bass. I mean, the guy was like a freaking genius to go that simple. And to, to be – I mean, once again, it, it's that, it, it's that uh, courage to go super simple, you know? What about uh, the bullets bullets covers? Dave, you started out painting them, right? The uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, the one that the one that changed everything was the uh, the rubber stamp cover. Um, oh, I had that one too, which I thought I thought I was going to get fired for, and uh, not only did I not get fired, but they uh, Karen Berger actually contacted me and said how much she she. Thought it was a brilliant cover, but it was me literally trying to save my bacon uh, right before FedEx. I get it—a little Devil Pig reference there. Hmm. Yeah, oh, nice. There you go. <laughs> I saw you there. And yeah, do you have the rubber stamp one? I'm going to put it up, Jeff. All right. right Jeff and I got to a big argument before this. Um, that should have been online. That would have been a good show. That would, that I wanted to have some visuals so we could talk about Dave's inspiration, the way he thinks about composing a cover, people who have been inspired by the same people he's been inspired by and what they do. And mm -hmm. uh, and Dan was just having none of it. Well, when you when you, when you you sent me this, <laughs> I don't think you were looking too hard. <laughs> so I was pulling out. Russian out being a spot. Out. Right. <laughs> For some reason, I think that you were kind of slacking. <laughs> oh, okay. And how many did you pull up? <laughs> how dare you? Okay. <laughs> Good day, sir. 
Yeah. There you go. Yeah, like like bumped from a stream, like like there's there's infighting and arguing. You're about ready to get bumped. How do you feel about that? We need a feud. Let's get a feud going. Feud him. Jeff, we need a feud. A lot yeah. of these streams have feuds. People are angry. Yeah. I'm gonna, I have I have beef. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> Every day, Jeff and I talk on the phone, and um, it's a big argument. Sadly, it constantly squashes some beef of some kind. Yeah, and it's from years. It could be. Hold on, I, I'm pulling up some good, some legit Dave stuff. Um, that he actually did. I'll give you ten dollars if you have a picture of Dave without a beard. I've never seen Dave without Ooh. a beard. Oh, it's good. Is it? Yeah. Good luck finding it. Um. Yeah, there's a Top Gun era photo of him without a beard somewhere out there. Uh, Is that when you were doing karaoke, Dave? <laughs> uh, well, that was just part of my job, actually. Yeah, the goose costume. Where's the goose costume? You looked good, man. You did look good. Joe uh, Tiffany F was your pharmacy. Uh, oh, cool. there. So, hey, Tiffany, how are you? Nice. <laughs> So Dave, are you going to do any more interiors ever? Is that a done deal for you, or are you? Hey, are you, gonna... you know what? Never say never, dude. <laughs> um, all right, here's some. Here, I pulled up some Dave's stuff. Oh, now, this is inspired. No, this is pretty cool. This is inspired. There's a is a um, Spanish or is it a Mexican artist? Wait, whoa! What is that? Oh, that's that's the uh, that was that's not the final. That's uh, oh, that's the rough. Yeah, wow. that was uh, the the thumbnail. Did you post for uh, the final? Oh, okay. I can't. I'm surprised I only have this one. Okay, this one. This is the cover. Is this Dave McCaig? Yeah, that was uh, that's a sad, that's a sad cover because I actually uh, did it while my father was dying, and I was I I literally had to do it in my parents' house when I didn't have a cut. I didn't have a computer, so Dave McCaig had to step in and color it for me. So. Nice it still looks good. Oh, in spite of McKeg coloring. No, in spite of the sadness. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, geez, Jeff. Yeah, I'm like, well, Dave's great. Both Dave's are great. Well, what it's still would be, those are tough circumstances. But this the the cover that's on the screen now, you can really see the uh, the texture that I was using with the, the chipboard. That's Batman, right? Batman! <laughs> Hey, yeah. He's not on a gargoyle. Yeah, speaking of modeling for Dave, can you post that photo you posted on Facebook yesterday? <laughs> you want me to put that one up? Yeah, yeah, just 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 you yeah. know. I'll let you guys look at this and Dave can talk about this one. This also has beautiful texture. Beautiful. Love the color. That's great. Nice one. That's a it has a Kevin Nolan vibe to it. That one? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. I'm not happy with the figure. I, I thought the figure looked stiff. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm just saying. Hey. <laughs> if you want to complain about something, the ball's a little off. Dave, do you think that? So, are you? Do you do that thing after every cover where you uh, you do a post mortem? What you should have done differently? What sucks about it? So you can do it differently the next time. Are you yeah, ever I happy think, with anything? You, you know the you know the thing that I love the most about comics is you can always get it right the next time. Well, that's a fun one. Oh yeah, you did a bunch of Deadpool's that were fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and, and once again, using that texture, I just I I just converted the uh, the brown chipboard into a gray. Okay. And you know, I mean, you can see a lot of the texture in that one. Yeah, that's beautiful. This one's really nice. It, a different type of. I thought this was really cool. It's it's a little hard to read, but I went for it. You know. Hmm. What about, tell me a little bit about this one, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> that literally is the funniest comic I have ever read. Um, Who wrote it? Uh, it was a Howard Stern guy. Um, Ron Zimmerman. Who? Ron Zimmerman. Yeah, and it was funny for all the right reasons. You know, it, it's like he could have taken it to a really bad space. Yeah, but he he kept it. He kept it. I don't know, lighthearted enough that it just it was just just ridiculously funny. I mean, this uh, cover is actually stunningly beautiful. It's great. It's great well, that's actually painted. That's a full. Oh, really? Cover. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, that's the thing about your Jimmy underneath your signature. There is that Palmiotti? 
<laughs> oh, that's right. No, it's. I wish it was other people, but no, I just made them all up. Yeah. Tell you a funny story about that about that uh, book. Um, you know, it came out. The story was really great, and you know the the Rawhide Kid character is fantastic in it, and uh, um, John Severin drew that book. Yeah, you know, that made it even better. Yeah, it was it's fantastic. A like classic Western artist, and, and John was up there in years. This this is. This, you know, he drew it, you know, I don't know if it was the last big project he drew before he passed away, but, you know, John Severin is a legend. And John was having the best time working on this book. And, and he just thought the scripts were great. And he, he was having a hoot of a time drawing this Western. Um, and then uh, Axel Lonzo, who was eventually editor in chief, he was the editor on this book. And he had gotten a call um, from, a, from a writer who was irate over this particular book. Oh yeah, and, uh, and shoot Axel out, and said, "How dare you take advantage of an old man like John Sever? He had no clue what he was drawing and stuff like that." And meanwhile, John was just like, "I was on a blast. I knew exactly what I was drawing. I thought it was great, you know." Uh, yeah, anybody can draw like like John Sever, and they're not senile. They're uh, yeah. It was it was just a, it was a weird thing, man, because this this, this 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 you know this went down and it was just like really. Um, but no, John had a great time working on that book. Uh, so cool. I love uh, that guy's work. Oh my God, it's so good. Um, so hey, what did you paint that with? Is that acrylics or oils? Uh, acrylics. Ah. I've never learned oils. I wish I, I wish I had, but I just, I, I just imagine them being really smelly, you know? <laughs> and you, can't do reason, oils like, in a, you can't do oils in an apartment or a studio where you're sharing it with other people, so. Oh, you went oils, wow. No, I said you can't. I oh, mean, you can't. oh, I was right. Okay. All right. Here's a day. I think you painted. Uh, yeah, that one's painted. Yeah. This and is I a did. cool cover Dave did. Um, this was another 100 Bullets one. I love that one. But what was nice about the 100 Bullets is if you look at the very first cover, which Dave did, he painted that one and he went, I mean, went through a whole evolution of different styles. Um, well, once again, I get bored, you know, like. People who draw the same way their whole career, I'm like, ugh, like I, I just can't do that, you know. I, I, I got to keep moving. Ha! Ah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's not the photo I'm talking about, Dan. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yes. You see that guy. Dan on a whim just decided that he needed a little attention. He needed some. Uh, Look, I found that in the garage. Some fanny pats. So wait till you see the thing I found today in the garage. It's awesome. Okay. Is that yeah, the, yeah, I, have I have to scan it in first. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a beauty. Trust are me. they the ceramic photos, Dan? Nothing's quite that special. <laughs> Here's some Albert Dorn Jeff picked out. Yeah. It's beautiful. Dave's a big fan of Dorn. Well, yeah, growing up, my dad had ordered um, the famous artist courses when he was a young man, and I grew up with those. So I grew up looking at Albert Dorn. Really? Oh, so, okay. yeah. Wow. So your, dad was an, your dad was an artist too. That guy's amazing. I mean, just I mean, looking at Dorn's art or the eyebrows. What were you looking at? Uh, both. <laughs> Take a look at Albert for a second. Yeah. Hello. Oh, he's so happy in that hey photo. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> what a draw! <laughs> God, I love those pants, man. Pants are the best. Look, Got me wallpaper. Look at the brows of that dude. Man. I'll draw anywhere. You don't have a desk. Give me a wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? I'm drawing over here. Ah. Fabulous. Amazing. It's like the, the eyebrows almost become eyelashes. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Man. Jesus. They're so the way, I'm, I'm growing mine out in honor of Bernie Wrightson until, you know, this, all this, uh, you know, virus shit is over with. So I'm going to see how long I can grow. Your, your eyebrows. Yeah. How how often do you get your eyebrows trimmed, Dave? I was gonna say how how uh, much. I literally have to. I literally have to trim them, man. They start growing out to the sides. I'm, I'm gonna have antennas in a month. Do you so, do it yourself, or do you go to a stylist? No, I just do it myself. No, that's that's. Can you, can handle, can you handle bar eyebrows? Yeah, that would be awesome. Dave so, Tony uh, Tony Donnelly wants to know if you're still working on your Rocketeer story. 
Oh, God. That's the thing uh, Jeff was helping me out on. No, no, I gave that up years ago. Uh, years. Yeah, that, that would have been fun. So that on the screen right now is Bill Mayer, and I, and I mistakenly pulled up some of his new stuff, not the stuff you would have been looking at when you were younger, but you said you were a fan of his. And it, oh, yeah. No, he's, he's, freak, he's, he's also one of those. Get, you know, he can do cartoons. He can do – his paintings are amazing. Like you, you showed one earlier – and and if I'm if I'm not mistaken, they're only like five or six inches tall, uh, really, which is even nuttier. Like if you go back to that uh, rhino one, Dan. Hold on one second. Um, <laughs> Wait for it. I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up more sexy pictures of me for everybody because there's been a lot of people writing into that. Yeah. Just kidding. Yeah. Nobody like, has that one. That one's really really tiny. Um. No wonder, because Jeff was picking out. He goes, here you go. Here's a 50 by 50 pixel image. Just slap that on there, Dan. <laughs> so weird, because it looks OK. Yeah. Cool, Granny. So what was it about this guy's stuff that you really liked, Dave, apart from it's obviously super cool? When you, like, you discovered him when you were pretty young, right? You can just tell talent. And his cartoon stuff, he used to do more pen and ink with, with uh, or actually it was more uh, uh, color pencil and ink and he 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 was just amazing oh, i mean he was classy amazing. work that dave's done oh man don't very do much of that come on but this is sort you're, of you're, gonna, you're, gonna, the, you're gonna get the broadcast torn down if you show too much of that <laughs> no, i'm not gonna show the whole thing i had to really carefully pick through it <laughs> oh. yeah then I, I dave i really love it when you do the uh, interior storytelling stuff yeah you know it just doesn't pay as well <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> hey Dave, I was I was uh, noticing as Dan was flipping through your actual covers, um, you you probably use the uh, overhead sort of bird's eye view angle more than most people I've seen. I it's do. A, it's a bitch to draw that. Oh, oh well. Um, yeah. Or sometimes Dave feels kind of tiny. He goes, "Hi, I'm down here looking up." Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You're so powerful. You know what? Maybe it's what his it's like the day and the self esteem, how he's yeah. feeling the thing. You know? Some yeah, well, I mistakenly thought he had some sort of plan when he was doing that, but apparently not. No, no but it's his emotional. It may just be emotional needs, you know, times when he's feeling better than the rest sometimes of the Sometimes I like to draw on ladders and sometimes I like to draw on <laughs> Right. <laughs> sometimes Dave feels like a little bird in the sky. Sometimes Aww. I like to photograph my friends like Dan. Like he, like I said, he posed for that uh, that Punisher piece. Yeah, Punisher uh, looks nice there. Looks a little soft. Wait, let me see if I can find the, uh, the yeah. final. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, actually, Dave, you should be finding these. I have a Dave Jets. I have detailed files of. Uh, Hold on, Dave's Hold work. On. That's yeah, that one always. That one makes me. That feels like a Dave cover to me. I wish Dave could like do something like this. Well, so I that seems, like, I beyond his that scope. You know, like design or anything. I mean, you know. Dave, while you're digging, uh, Gar wants to know: Do you ever do any full grayscale ink wash work before going to colors? No, I have you right here. I have in the past. There you go, Gar. There's your answer. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, when you were doing backgrounds at Justice League Unlimited, did, were you doing those uh, those gray tones, those pencil tones? Yeah, yeah. That, that was a uh, that was easy stuff. I mean, yeah, I had to learn that in a hurry. I'd never done anything like that before. I'm like, oh, this is what this is what it is. Uh, so that was a that was a rough first week. This is something nice. Mitchell's <laughs> Mitchell's actually a fan of um, Joe, Jeff, and Ben. And myself, but he's never liked your work. But here he says Dave Styles really gotten better over the years. Wait, wait, wait. Where did he say that first part? <laughs> Where did he say that? All right, he never said that. Fine. <laughs> no. All right, said, Dan, uh, switch to my computer. This is what he said. You're reading into it, Dan. Yeah. All right, hold on. Dave found the original here. Oh, nice. Right. Wow. Hold on. Let me get rid of Mitchell's thing there. And remember that blood trick I was talking about? I used uh, I used that all over the place. I sure looks pissed. Hmm. You posed for it. Oh, well, that explains it then. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And then Dave had me hoisted up upside down 
and then he got on, I have a skylight and he took pictures through the skylight to get these, these other ones. So it was an interesting day of posing. You'll go a long way for art, Dan. Yeah. I'm like, Dave, this is super uncomfortable. The blood's rushing to my head. Dave's on my skylight. Um, <laughs> but the Punisher cover needed to be done and we're big Marvel fans. You have to suffer for realism. Yeah. <laughs> I guess wants to know if there's any new flatulene coming out. No, not anytime soon. That's for sure. That's terrible. I know. The world. Uh, needs let's see. I was trying to answer uh, that one question about uh, tones. I don't know what I did it for though. Did mm. you finish that uh, piece you're working on? Did you color that girl? Well, uh, yeah, for the most part. Yeah, here it is. Wait a minute, you already. Uh... Cool. I like that we've oh. been talking and Dave still been working. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. So are you going to color the whole thing? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I was just doing it for this, to be honest with you. You're doing it for kicks. Well, you're I actually kick. learned quite a bit. Thanks, Dave. Hey, you're welcome. Jeff, that wasn't so bad. Right? I know that you... Uh, wait, go back, go back, Dan. Another you here? To uh, the computer. Hold on. Uh, like how we have it right now. Oh, to the computer. Like that. Yeah. Uh, another thing, if you want to add a color to it, you just you make another multiply layer, and you can kind of darken things up a little bit. Oh. Now, what brush are you using to do that? Oh, it's just a big-ass brush. You know? But I just added a little bit of blue to it to kind of knock him back a little bit. Oh, I got you. Oh, yeah. He's, you know, not as, you know, there on the same level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you can kind of adjust that. Shop shop. And you go to general brushes, Jeff, you'll see yeah. this. It says it's called Big Ass Brush. There you go. Right, right. Brush. <laughs> that comes with Photoshop, right? Big Ass Brush. Yeah, it's standard. It's standard with the. With gotcha. The, yeah. Anyway. Well, Jeff, I apologize for um, a lot of the disparaging comments I've made earlier. I apologize for losing my cool. It's but that didn't happen on air, though. Uh, well, of course. I'm a professional. <laughs> Either of these sincere. <laughs> no. Yeah, mostly. Uh, well, Dave, Jeff, that was... Yeah, Joe. I, I want to apologize for, for not defending you when Dan attacked you the way he did. It's, it's, <laughs> what are you going to do? I, I, I thought I'd be <laughs> this is the wimpiest uh, live stream. There's no. We just destroyed any drama we had with this. Uh, yeah, we're still on there's, no feud. there's no feud. Oh man, you blew it. Way to go. Um, we have Dave, another minute. question from Gar if you're up for it. What was what? that another question from Gar here for Dave? All right. Uh, he says your sense of design is so good. Do you thumbnail uh, your covers or do you go straight to your board? <laughs> I wish I could go straight to my board. <laughs> no, there's a lot of thought and you know back and forth and a lot of. I actually tend to uh, design a cover in my head like a million times before I even start with a thumbnail. And, uh, but yeah, no, I, I definitely do thumbnails before, uh, I go straight to the board. And even then I'm, it's a lot of drawing and redrawing and figuring stuff out and all that kind of junk. So, um, yeah, I wish I was that good. I'm not quite young G. <laughs> yeah. That guy's a genius. Start drawing. Yeah. yeah. Very talented. Look at this. This is the type of feedback I like. Fantastic. How come you never post the negative comments? Huh. Uh, there were some negative comments about my uh, my Most early high-end yeah. high modeling that I did. <laughs> I thought you looked fantastic. Bow. And by the way, Dave, if people go to Facebook, they can see I, I, did, I added some T-shirt <laughs> designs in there. For you. Yeah, those were great. All that. that was outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> I I that guy, a, uh, a My hair was the hairy chest for a while. <laughs> I looked at the hair on the chest. I'm like, wow. That would, if if you, you have to just narrow that off at this the, point. The chest on the t-shirt. Yeah. What's funny is I've, I've gotten older. There's there's less hair everywhere. So not in the same. Oh, ears. No. That's true. It's all migrated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dave, I have one final question for you, if you don't well, mind. We're running out of time, Jeff. All right, never mind. Hurry, I'll ask hurry, go, ahead. Hurry. go ahead, Jeff. Dave. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, Dave. Right. So you do so many covers, you have so many ideas. 
like if you get stuck, do you have a system? Do you have like you do something? If you get stuck, do you have a thing to do to get you out of your? Spit it out, Jeff. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you do when you hell? don't have an idea? Do you do you, do you take a walk? Do you do you look through something? Oh, like, no, what, what's your system? Are you I'm asking you, Are you asking Dave there. out on a date? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Are you asking? Hey, what are you doing? Basically, what are you doing later? He can't go for a walk. He's social distancing. Uh, in, the, in the past. Oh, Lord. What, 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 did he sacrifice a chicken? What does he do if he doesn't have an idea? And deadlines uh, are coming up. I tend to play Xbox. Perfect. <laughs> the answer Jeff was looking for. That's exactly the answer I wanted. Hey, hey, hey uh, Dan, quick, uh, go back to my computer real quick to answer oh. uh, Gar's question. Oh, God. Holy crap. Like that was a where I did a zoom in on that. Zoom all, in. This is all uh, ink wash. That's gorgeous. Every time I think I, I I know ink wash, Dave will post something, or I'll look at something like like you know, Jessica will post something that Tom Palmer did, you know, and for um, the old Marvel magazines. And so you're you're using like um, you're you're basically changing the hues on this, right? Yeah, uh, I'm, I put a uh, it's a color layer. You use yeah. color. You know, you know the hue, saturate, saturation, mm -hmm. color, luminosity. I use color, and it changes everything that's not 100% black or 100% white into whatever color you lay down. Yeah, and then Amazing. you can add, uh, you know, more to it. Uh, and that's like an under color that I add, or like a normal color, mm -hmm. uh, but. Hey Dave, actually, this this is a good example. So, so you would not use that chipboard, for example, as an undercover undercolor for for Iron Man, correct? Um, I could, yeah. Oh, would you? Because I, mean, I, just, I just think it would just. I mean, I would just imagine it would be that much more smoothening out that you'd have to do, right? Because I think, I think uh, well, this one I did before I started using the, that technique. Okay. Um, otherwise, I would have. But yeah, it, it would have. Uh, it probably would have been. So you. Nice. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and then uh, the final on this ended up looking like. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. it. it now, Dave. <laughs> hold on. Yeah. Oh, it's taking hold forever. On. I can't see the artwork. We're here to look at the art, not like your weirdo files. It's too long. Okay. Right, here's wait for all the screenshots of the file list. All yeah, right. <laughs> here's the final. <laughs> What's all that behind there? Are those are those comic book characters, or what? What is that? You may have heard of them. I'm not sure. Was this a Planet Hulk piece? Yeah. Or? Planet Hulk and Hulk's Annihilus. So, was this the commission you did for somebody? No, this well, is Proper Deck, right? Yeah, proper Deck. Wow. Wait, Upper, upper Decker? Decker? Upper Deck. <laughs> Gross. Well, that came out pretty good. Yeah, it was a poster, right, Dave? Or it was a uh, box art. Oh, hmm. 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 Huh. Black, looks hmm. like looks like someone shot at 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 the Hulk a little bit low there. Like that's not the greatest place to aim. Like what? You've been crossing his legs, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> like maybe someone, someone really hated the Hulk, is what I'm saying, based on where they were firing. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Maybe yeah. they're self-inflicted wounds. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the Hulk made those. those. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a deeper story there. <laughs> Dan, I think I think Ted has a great question for Dave. It's very fun. Um, all right. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's really how he gets over the artistic. <laughs> oh, 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 look who just came in here. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, man. No, Cully, come on. Oh, I smelled something. Cully, this right. has been the best episode we've ever had, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we actually just, learned something. He just pulled a Bendis. Yeah. yeah. He's our new Bendis. Yes. Um, Both bald. Hmm. There you go. But, yeah, Jeff and I got into a big argument. Um, There's some slapping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From safe distance. All right. So, who do we want to have uh, on the hot seat next time? Dan, D Joe, you want to do it? Joe, Joe uh, had some good uh, ideas. Uh, let's discuss offline, guys. We'll see. All right. All right. <laughs>
Yeah, upcoming, Charles, Charles. upcoming yeah. Joe had an idea where we work on a script and we all kind of take a stab at it and we like just right. one page <laughs> and then you can see how we're laying out the page and the decisions you know, the, we made. The idea would be to write like a like a quick like you know three or four page Marvel style outline, right? And then see how each one of us not in detail drawing, but just how we would break down the story. I think that that'd be kind of fun. You know? That'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, what, what if uh, what if we do the old Marvel style where uh, uh, no, that wouldn't work for this. Uh, never mind. <laughs> thanks, Dave. Thanks, thanks, Dave. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> well, I, uh, all right. Yeah, people all have the same description of a cover, and then lay out the cover. You know, where none of us look at what each other is doing, and then we compare it at the very end. Mm. But everybody else can see because Ben will be in control. Ah. Oh. How about that? Mm. Mm. I mean, the, we, we have the blind way you taste test. We yeah. have to uh, pry the control out of uh, Dan's iron grip there. Yeah. The problem with that, then, is that that no one gets to see what we're doing you know, until the very end. No, no. Everybody would be able to see because uh, – uh, ben would be switching from camera to camera. We just oh. would just not look at our own feeds. Gotcha. I get a lot of feedback. A lot of the fans specifically like my camera work, Dave. <laughs> but Dave, that, that I, I don't know if I can rely on the trust factor because Dan likes to look at himself on camera. He does. Yeah. yeah, I don't trust Dan, Dan not problem. to look at all. Dan is a peeker. It's over here. Yeah. Oh. Um, mm. By the way, I'm wearing a, a War Master shirt. Mm. Um, Hmm. I love that. Yeah, I noticed he was uh, pumping those, but why didn't he do one of uh, the artwork we did for him? That's true. He had all the shirt. The shirt I'm wearing, I, I, I drew for him, but I, I don't think it's available anymore. It's done. It's ah. old. It's an can old we order shirt. Warmaster? You can definitely order Warmaster. Yeah, yeah they'll deliver hey, that booze to your door. All right. Did you Let's order any, Ben? Uh, I have a bottle. Uh, are open, guys. They're, they're considered essential. All right, I'll have to get some so I keep so I can keep surviving, keep See, making art. Hydrate. <laughs> you gotta hydrate. <laughs> I made the mistake of using ice in front of Josh, and he about like slapped it out of my hands. Do not piss off the champ. Nope. Did, did you watch uh, Josh's little uh, tour of his liquor cabinet? No, I totally missed that. He did like a whiskey tasting thing, and I missed the whole thing. Yeah, that was that was good theater. It's much better than this. Yeah. I went over there for a whiskey tasting party. It's much better than this. Yeah. It started out. It started out like a really like Josh is pouring us whiskey, and there's a whole bunch of unsavory characters there, and um, we're all nodding our heads, and Josh is you know explaining it like the whole process of making it, what region, and I was like, wow, it's very important. By the end of the uh, tasting party, there were samurai swords out. Um, it was complete mayhem. So, every, but everybody survived. Right, good. Mostly. Mostly. Yeah. All right, gents. Do ben, we want to wrap it back to your garden, Ben? Yeah, I got, I got. Ben looks like he's out. All right, Ben, thanks for taking care of us tonight. I am sunburnt and tired. I'm going to bed. <laughs> All right. Dave, All right. thanks for tu tutorialing us. Show us your tan lines, Ben. Yeah, I feel like people yeah, are probably yeah, stupider yeah, now. Boy. Boy. Oh, you got the you got, you got the nice uh, farmer tan there. Nice. Nice. Guns, so, legit. Yeah, yeah. I, my my dad used to drive a cab in New York. We had a bunch of different jobs, but there was a couple of summers where he drove a cab in New York. I didn't come home, and when he took his shirt off, only one arm was right. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> That's historical. Mm. Well, sunscreen, Ben, and we'll see everybody next week. We'll determine which uh, new tutorial we'll do. Stay home. Stay safe. All right, gang. All right. Be good. Take care, everyone. Thanks Be for joining us. Bye. And we're ending. That's it. That's it. That's it.